This video is on electrochemistry part three. We're going to start off with cell notation. So the first point is when you are writing the cell notation of reaction, the oxidation reaction is written to the left, unless the reaction involves the standard hydrogen electrode. That's the only time that the oxidation reaction is not written to the left. Then the second point is electrodes are written on the outside of the cell notation. So if we look over here, they would be written on the outsides over here. Then point three, uh, these lines represent a phase boundary. So they are drawn between two species which are in different phases, but in contact with each other. So you can see it over here, it represents the phase boundary. The double line represents the salt bridge. So this is kind of a basic way to remember your cell notation. You first have your reducing agent, then your line, which is representing the phase boundary, then your oxidized species, then the double line representing the salt bridge, then the oxidizing agent, the line, represents a phase boundary, and then the reduced species. Okay, so over here we have zinc with our line, zinc 2 plus iron, double line for salt bridge, copper 2 plus iron, line for phase boundary, and then copper. Where the metal is part of the reaction and used as the electrode. So over here, Previously, we mentioned that the electrodes are written on the outside of the cell. In this case, the metal is used as the electrode, so it is the, still written on the outside. Then, this is an example with platinum on the outsides representing the electrode. This is where another substance, like platinum, is used as the electrode. So, in this reaction, we using platinum as our electrode. And again, the line representing the phase boundary. So we have platinum, phase boundary, chlorine minus iron, phase boundary, chlorine, uh, diatomic molecule, salt bridge, F2, phase boundary, F negative iron, phase boundary, and then PT for our electrode. This is generally um, used when the elements or molecules, whatever is reacting, cannot be their own electrode. So you, chlorine can't make up an electrode, so you use platinum as its electrode. Platinum is one of the common electrodes that are used. N.5. If two species are written on the same side of the net ionic reaction, you separate them with a comma. So two species that are on the same side of the net ionic reaction, we separate them with a comma. You must, point six is state symbols must be shown when requested. So that means when you put in your phases, so you meet the symbols. So S for solid, AQ for aqueous solution, S for solid again. Then point seven, standard conditions must be given when requested. So aqueous solution, you have your AQ, one mole per decimeter cubed. Gases with, are represented by G and are one atmosphere. Temperatures are at 25 degrees Celsius, and this is shown at the end of the cell notation. Note this says when requested. Standard hydrogen electrode is connected as the anode, even though it may not act as oxidation. It is always put first. So this is that exception we have to oxidation going first. The standard hydrogen electrode is always put first, regardless of whether it was oxidized or not. So here's an example. 
Then we move on to cell potential and standard hydrogen electrode. When a metal is placed into a solution of its ions, an electrical potential is established between the metal and its ions. You, we cannot directly measure this potential, so we use the standard hydrogen electrode for comparison. So here is an example. We've got PT, platinum, as our electrode, um, and we've got H2 and H plus ions. Over here, we have our copper electrode with Cu2 plus. So the H2 becomes H plus and loses electrons. So it is oxidized. Oxidation is the loss of electrons. Copper 2 plus plus electrons forms copper. This is reduction, gain of electrons. The hydrogen cell is the reference half cell and the potential difference is measured. Okay. Remember this is under standard conditions. The concentration must be one mole per decimeter cubed. Temperature must be 25 degrees Celsius and pressure must be at one atmosphere or 101 kilopascals. Okay. Platinum must be used when the half cell does not include a metal. So here, hydrogen, there is no metal, so we have to use platinum as the electrode. Potentials on the table are relative to the standard hydrogen electrode. Okay, so positive potential, they have the tendency to reduce. Negative potential have the tendency to oxidize. We when we are now referring to table 4B. So anything with a positive potential, which is written, they are written along the right hand side of the table. They have the tendency to reduce because they are strong oxidizing agents. Positive, sorry, negative potential, they have, are strong reducing agents, therefore have the tendency to oxidize. Now we are dealing with platinum electrode. Why would we use the platinum electrode? There are four different reasons. These are very um, application type questions. So the first is it absorbs gas on the surface. The second, it is unreactive. Another word you can use for unreactive is inert. Third, it is a good conductor and fourth, it catalyzes the reaction between the H plus ions and hydrogen. So these are four reasons why platinum electrodes are used. Now we're looking at the redox table. So with the redox table over here, we can see our E, this is for potential difference, standard potential. It is measured in volts, is the cell potential of the half cell, of a half cell. Okay. Positive potential, species reduce better than the H plus ion. The more positive, the better the species is at reducing. So the more positive, means it is a stronger oxidizing agent, so therefore it is better at reducing. Our negative potential, species oxidize better than H2. There are more negative, better oxidizers. So they're stronger reducing agents. That is given to you on the table with the arrow up the side that says increasing reducing ability. So they're better reducing agents and therefore they oxidize better. Okay. So at the top right of the table are your better reducing agents. At the bottom left are your better oxidizing agents. You can use the arrows up and down the side where it says increasing oxidizing ability. Oxidizing ability can also mean oxidizing agent. And increasing, reducing ability, it is better 
reducing agent. Okay. Better oxidizing agents react spontaneously with better reducing agents. So spontaneous means that it occurs without any energy input. Non-spontaneous, it is made to occur by supplying energy. Then we have the cell potential is equal to the cathode potential minus the anode potential. If the cell potential is positive, if it's a positive, the reaction is spontaneous. If it is negative, the reaction is non-spontaneous. This is a formula that you, they can, you can use to calculate the cell potential. Okay, current and equilibrium of a galvanic cell. So first point, a cell will stop delivering current when one of the reactants is finished. So it will run to completion. So over here we have copper two plus plus two electrons to form copper. As the forward reaction goes, the concentration of the Cu two plus ions decreases. Equi decreases, the equilibrium shifts to favor the reverse reaction, reducing the number of electrons accepted at the cathode. Equilibrium is then reached. Then over here, zinc forms zinc two plus and releases two electrons. The forward reaction, Zn two plus will increase. Equilibrium will favor the reverse reaction and fewer electrons are released. Therefore, equilibrium will be released. We know that the cell reaches equilibrium when the cell potential equals zero volts. Okay. Potentials, the equilibrium favors reduction, so an increase in, volt, in potential or voltage. Equilibrium favors oxidation when the voltage is lower. So when we have a higher voltage or a higher cell potential, the equilibrium favors reduction. When we have a low voltage or a low cell potential, the equilibrium favors oxidation. So over here, the two H plus ions plus two electrons to form H2. It favors reduction. There's an increase on the left and a decrease on the right. Now we are moving on to electrodes and salt bridge. With the electrode, if there's an increase in surface area, there will be an increase in the rate of the reaction and therefore an increase in the current in the cell. This does not affect the EMF of the cell. The salt bridge, a shorter, more conductive bridge lowers resistance and increases current. We can see this with our formula, current equals charge over time. Okay, so, and also with voltage equals I times R. Voltage is constant, therefore increase in current will happen with a decrease in resistance. So a lower resistance will lead to a higher current. So that means with our salt bridge, if we have a more conductive bridge, it will lower resistance and therefore our current will increase. Okay. Again, this does not affect the EMF of the cell. Cell potentials does not indicate the speed of the reaction. So it doesn't have anything to do with how fast the reaction takes place. It has only got to do with the EMF of the cell. If you look over here, there is no cell potential being indicated with speed. Okay. Overall balanced equation. You, what you have to do is write down the oxidation and the reduction half reactions. 
you then multiply to cancel out electrons and hydrogens on both sides. So you want to kind of balance them so that they are the same number of electrons and hydrogens. You're then going to combine your, your equations. Simplify when you add and plus ions can be combined. So when you have positive and negative ions, you want to combine them to form compounds and molecules. So that's how we simplify it. Positive and negative ions that can be combined to form a compound must be done in your final balanced equations. And then you add on your spectator ions. A reminder that spectator ions are ions that do not lose or gain electrons throughout the reaction. That is all for this video. We will be covering electrolytic cells in the next video.